What's up, Fox Trotters? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're new here, welcome, welcome. If you're returning, hello. It's nice to see you all again. You guys look great. Yes, you person who just got to work only to realize that you left your lunch at home and that's just gonna be how your Monday starts. But it's gonna be fine. You look great. <laughs> I hope everyone's having a good day so far. It is Monday morning for me at the, this moment. When you hear this video, it'll probably be uh, afternoon, evening time. I'm recording part of this before I head out to work and the rest of it will be obviously done after work. <laughs> I'm not sure why I said it that way, like duh, okay. Anyway, today we're gonna be doing an r slash anti MLM garbage video with some LuLaRoe mixed in, a little bit of unique mixed in. It's been a while since I tapped into that one. So uh, we're gonna have some laughs. It's gonna be pretty good. So uh, if that sounds good to you, then please stay tuned. Okay, this was a case of a hun doing that copy pasting thing once again. And it's one of those big long messages. It's like, why go buy things at the grocery store when you could buy it from your local whatever consultant, you know, fill in the blank, whatever MLM it is. <laughs> okay, and then uh, one of her Facebook friends was absolutely not having it and makes a full response back that um, it's solid gold. <laughs> okay, let's read the hun side first on the left. Please explain to me why you'll buy candles from Yankee Candles, but not from a Scentsy or Country Scents rep. You'll buy makeup and beauty products from Ulta, but not from an Avon or Unique rep. You will buy supplements, protein bars, vitamins, or shakes from GNC and Walmart, but not from an Herbalife. You'll go to the nail salon, but not buy an $11 set of nails from a Color Street or Bella Hoot nails rep. You'll buy clothes and bags from Target, but you've never tried a friend's online boutique, 31, or Legging Girl. Oh, Legging Girl. <laughs> wow, okay. Why are we, as a society, so apt to support big retailers, but not our family and friends? Yes, I realize sometimes pricing is the factor, but remember, you get what you pay for. Direct sales companies sell the best at their products, and the purchases come with great customer service through your rep. And don't forget your friends that are crafters. They spend lots of their time creating their crafts, so please give them the love they deserve, too. I challenge each of you to purchase one thing from a friend this week instead of from a store. Just one thing. That one thing is helping your friend support his slash herself. Don't think, just do it. I'm all about supporting my business owner friends. It's how I pay my bills. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Number one. I like the scents offered by Yankee better and their price is more reasonable and their candles last longer. Number two. I am allergic to everything Avon makes. Their jewelry makes me break out. Plus, over the years, I have found that the quality of many Avon products versus what you pay for is not as good as what you can find in stores for the same price point. Number three. Supplements are a complete scam. I buy none from anyone. Number four. The job the nail salon does lasts 30 days. The $11 direct sales option does not. Number five. I have purchased from 31. Target is significantly cheaper and offers the same quality. Direct sales is just a new take on an old scam. The pyramid scheme. The companies that offer direct sales products do not adequately compete with traditional retailers in cost quantity, convenience, or quality, which is why they are less popular than traditional retail options. This is how it has always been. Direct sales has never been a profitable endeavor for those that choose to peddle it. It is only the people at the very top who make any money. Well, thanks for your opinion, but that isn't how it is for everyone, and, and you forgot about crafters. <laughs> yeah, she left the crafters out because obviously people who actually make their own things, you know, people uh, who make their crafts, who paint, who make jewelry on their own, who uh, make clothing, you know, make whatever, fill in the blank, birdhouses. There's, there's so many things out there that people make and sell. So, yeah, uh, obviously, um, yeah, you should buy from little crafters who make things. That's a, that's a great idea. But how the heck does that fit in with all of those crazy MLM businesses? Like, give me a break. What an insult to people who make things with their hands for a living. Like, what a complete insult. Like, they're just thrown into the same category? I don't think so. But I gotta say, I really, really like the response back. Um, I like how it's not mean, but it is very direct, right? <laughs> like there is no fluff. 
there it's just straightforward information and you could tell it sounds really informed and the fact that they have purchased from 31 which i've never heard of before i had no idea what this was before this i've heard of baskin robin 31 flavors but I mean, obviously that's not the same thing i know guys okay <laughs> But yeah, and Target is significantly cheaper and offers the same quality. So I would take that person's word for it. I mean, they sound legit. Um, and, you know, the supplements thing, for the most part, yeah, supplements are <laughs> pretty ridiculous, right? Like, of course, if, if you are someone who eats, doesn't eat any vegetables ever and uh, in general has a pretty poor diet, yeah, it's probably a good idea for you to take a multivitamin, among other things, you know, sure. <laughs> but in general, these companies that sell these supplements, like, they're just a big scam and i'm not saying all supplements are i'm gonna i'm gonna just speak only of mlm supplements because well i'm biased first of all <laughs> um yeah i don't know and i like how the response back at the very end was just so like didn't acknowledge anything that that person had very reasonably put there you know and written very well as a matter of fact it's very very informed uh well written easy to read i felt like i learned something after that um, <laughs> but they just ignore that completely and then obviously got nervous and, <laughs> and we're just like, well, what about the crafters? <laughs> like, okay, yeah, that's what we're going to focus on here. Okay. <laughs> yeah. This is unfortunate because I actually am very fond of all things themed galaxy. I love the colors that often go with galaxies. I like stars, constellations, nebulas. I don't know. I just, the whole space thing, space scares me and also uh, fascinates me at the same time. So I actually have like, my, my bedroom is actually galaxy themed, but it's kind of cool. I'm, well, I think it's cool. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but this makes me sad because I know that this was all probably way too expensive and the sweater looks like it's made out of, or maybe it's supposed to be a shirt with that sad misshapen pocket situation stitched on it, but it looks like the material is, is very thin and it looks like that stuff that wrinkles super easily. Like you could see it's already wrinkled down kind of on her forearm. And like for me, I'm someone that wrinkles just seem to find me. So this type of material is like a no-go. And then the leggings, I mean, I like leggings, all right, but I also don't wear heavily patterned leggings. But if you do, that's awesome. Like, rock on, do, live your best life, you know, whatever makes you feel good. Um, but I just know these are way too expensive and I'm, I know the material's probably not as, uh, not very good quality. Like, again, you could probably go to Walmart online and find something similar for cheaper and it's probably of similar, if not better quality. I don't know. So you see something like this, it doesn't actually look like it should cost very much. And you know, it probably cost like costed a ton. Like, you know, that the sweater itself was probably over 40 bucks. Um, the, the, the leggings range anywhere from what, like 13 to $25 or more, depending on like the specialtiness of the pattern. I don't know. This just, I love galaxy and galaxy print tends to make me very happy and full of wonder. And then I see this and it just like, <laughs> womp womp. <laughs> Oh, wow. Here we go. <laughs> Floral and animal print. Oh, man. LuLaRoe is going to try to push that until the company finally collapses into itself. Like, they're just going to take that one to the grave with them. I swear. <laughs> animal print goes with everything. It's a neutral. No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> and you know what's so funny? If you were to take off that bizarre marbled bed sheet salmon colored bed sheet thing that she's wearing over the top of all of that and you got rid of the animal print ankle booties and instead maybe did like a black ankle booty or even like a strappy shoe or strappy sandal a strappy heel and like any color that's on the skirt really that would probably be pretty cute like obviously we're we're gonna take out of the fact that it's you know the material is probably crap and that it's way too expensive we're not gonna worry about those factors at the moment we're just gonna go off of what it looks like for right now and if you were to take off yeah yeah, take off that jacket the boots replace it. i mean that would actually i'd walk by her and i'd be kind of jealous i'd be like wow she's way more put together than i am but then again like what's new <laughs> um but it's just it's unfortunate because like she was almost there with a good looking outfit right but that's kind of the lularoe way they don't want just an outfit that looks good they want something that's going to stick in your memory whether it's good or bad they want you to remember it <laughs> you're never going to forget this stuff 
Oh, and it's just weird too because, you know, these these consultants always have great hair, they always have wonderful makeup, they always look like they're ready for like the best Instagram photo shoot of their life, and then they have on these outfits and it's so contradictory to me. You guys, I cannot get away from this hot dog shirt. It is going to haunt me for the rest of my life. <laughs> This hot dog shirt, I swear, it, it. I keep seeing it. I feel like I. I feel like it's haunting me. I feel like it's after me. I feel like it's watching me. <laughs> Um, it's gonna come up there's gonna come a point where I'm gonna be at like a Goodwill or a consignment store and I'm gonna see this shirt it's gonna lock eyes with me across the room and I'm gonna have to buy it I'm gonna have to because this shirt apparently wants to be part of my life I am being haunted by the hot dog shirt <laughs> oh my god <laughs> like seriously I, I honestly hope that anyone who would wear this would wear it only ironically like as a joke right <laughs> only and even then it's just <laughs> you know the cut of it's gonna be a nightmare it's one of those shorter in the front longer in the back types and it's gonna have like that sleeve length you see that sleeve length right there that's gonna chop me right in the mid arm that for me is like the worst cut to have like if you want to take away any shape that I have and you want to make me look like a big old block put me in this shirt <laughs> oh no <laughs> building my shampire don't call it that don't call it that you're not building anything but debt and residue on your scalp <laughs> Oh, and it's too bad because you can tell she's early on into the Monat Monet experience because her hair still looks pretty good. <laughs> it does. It looks great. <laughs> it looks nice and thick and full and shiny, and I'm sure it won't for much longer, which is horrifying. <laughs> uh, what's also horrifying is 965 people liked this post, which is confusing. Very, very confusing. Could they all be Monet hunts? Hmm, I don't know. I It's possible. It's just there's so many people that liked it that scares me. Ugh, <laughs> oh, I just, I hope she gets out of it soon <laughs> before she becomes one of those statistics with the, with the pictures of the scalp that looks like someone put acid on it or, or the, uh, you know, the, the piles of hairballs at the bottom of your shower. I just, I don't want that for anyone even if this person that we're looking at here is a total jerk like I still don't want all her hair to fall out like I really don't and I don't want her to sell stuff to other people it's gonna make other people's hair fall out uh, or just have discomfort or a burning itching scalp like I don't want that for anybody it's just can you only imagine what the ingredients are if they're doing that to the body like uh, I don't know Monat Monet. I've heard, actually, it's funny. I've heard from all of you. Uh, some have said to pronounce it Monat. Some have said Monet. And I have Googled it and I've gotten both answers. So I don't know. <laughs> so I'm just going to call it Monat Monet. Most of the time I'll probably call it Monet. But I don't know. Um, I don't really, I don't really think any of us cares that much, right? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing keeps you warm like see-through sweaters. <laughs> My autumn loving heart is bursting with excitement over these brand new Lucille cable knit sweaters. Heart, grab yours. And I'm not going to read all those hashtags, but I'm noticing there's a few of them that I, that I just have to bring up. Okay, the hashtag women supporting women, hashtag women empowerment, hashtag women empowering women, hashtag small business owner, hashtag businesswoman. Wow, you're really hitching your wagon to someone else's star on those ones, aren't you? My word. <laughs> I love how LuLaRoe, as well as many other MLMs, just jump on whatever bandwagon they think is trendy right now, whatever they think is going to get people's attention. Like if they all of a sudden start just talking about women empowerment, that women are just going to suddenly start buying this stuff in mass pretty shady tactic if you ask me and what's also pretty crappy is that the gal wearing these horrible sweaters <laughs> might actually think that she is doing something good she could have drank the kool-aid where she really does believe that she is a woman empowering other women that's very possible she might really believe that she's part 
of something bigger and better. That's that's how they catch people. They, you know, most people want to do well and they want to to, to support other people and they want to be like a do-gooder. That's kind of our nature. And to play on that is just a really nasty marketing tactic. Uh, not surprised, but I am grossed out. <laughs> What's also awful is the fact that she wore a black shirt beneath both of the sweaters so that you could clearly see where all of the gaps in between the really poorly done cable knit is. Like you can see all the holes. You could tell, if you live anywhere where your winters dip below 45, and that's a lot of places, right? So if it gets colder, if it gets 45 or, or colder anywhere, you are not going to want to wear this sweater at all because you're going to get hit by a single breeze and it's going to go right through your sweater and it's going to hit you in the skin and it's going to take all your breath away and you're going to be very unhappy that you chose to wear that that day. <laughs> or wear that. My English is so good today. Look, I had a long day at work, all right? It was sweaty and it was hot and people weren't very nice because sometimes people just go to restaurants and aren't very nice. It just happens and I'm gonna stop talking. That has nothing to do with these awful sweaters. Okay, moving on. <laughs> uh, why do they edit them like this? <laughs> oh man, it's been too long since I've been to the unique subreddit. Uh, now, okay, I will say for the record, my only issue with the unique subreddit is that sometimes the posts can be just straight up mean. Sometimes the posts that people make are hard to verify that it is in fact unique and it can just be um, a little messy. So um, I don't pull from there as much as I used to now that I'm more aware of kind of like the intricacies of the subreddit. <laughs> but this one was too good to pass up. <laughs> so I mean, you know, you hear all the, the horror stories about mascara and it doesn't even look like she hasn't any on, or maybe she does, but it's very little. But I mean, her eyes look fine. They don't look like they're doing anything bad. They, they look fine. But those lips, what the heck? <laughs> okay, so she says that Tuesday calls for a pink shimmery look. So my guess is, what if, if I can try to deduce what's happening here, she put on her lips shimmery pink something, either uh, like eyeshadow maybe, um, because it looks like she maybe took a picture with flash and then the, ref the, the light reflected or refracted off of the shimmery whatever she put on her lips in such a way so that all that we see are just like crusty lips, okay? That's what it looks like. I'm sure her lips are not crusty, okay? I'm sure they're fine, but in this image, in this lighting, with the way she has put makeup on them, they look crusty, and I'm sorry. <laughs> it looks gross. I don't think that's getting across the um, pink shimmery look she's trying to project. <laughs> Um, I don't know. <laughs> There's just a lot of issues. First of all, like I said, with the eyes, can't really tell what's happened there. They look, they look, uh, they look kind of benign, which for Unique is good, right? Usually the mascara is atrocious, so at least that's not an issue here. But <laughs> it's just the, the lips look so like dry and and wrinkly and crusty, and I hate that because I'm sure her mouth does not look like that. I'm sure it's 100% because of the product and the lighting, <laughs> but it's so funny. Okay, what the heck? <laughs> Want to look like this? I can help. No thanks. <laughs> Y'all, the LuLaRoe Valentina worn under the LuLaRoe Jessie dress is a game changer. Want to look like this? I can help. DM me or shopping link in bio at LuLaRoe, hashtag LuLaRoe, hashtag full fashion, hashtag summer style, hashtag cute hat, hashtag love LuLaRoe. I wonder if the hat is LuLaRoe. Does LuLaRoe do hats now? Ooh, I gotta do research. <laughs> um, but I can't imagine anyone wanting to look like that. <laughs> it, it, once again, this looks like how a child would dress themselves. Once again, just putting things under and over however they please because that's what kids do. <laughs> but the shirt she has on underneath the dress, just for reference folks, there's this shirt called the Valentina that Lularo seems to really be desperately trying to push. And I know that one of you out there, your name is Valentina, and I think you were terribly offended that they named this horrible shirt that name, so I'm sorry to you. Um, but they're really trying to push this shirt. I keep seeing it everywhere, and it's just like an ugly button-up that looks shapeless. 
and it, it looks like the buttons at least the picture i saw the buttons look like they were on the opposite side but that's probably just the image being mirrored incorrectly so um so she's wearing a button-up shirt underneath her little dress thing her little shapeless little girl dress outfit and it's just like i let me tell you i blurred her face but this gal looked like she was about my age like late 20s early 30s you know what i mean like you're a grown woman <laughs> my dear <laughs> and you know i don't want to come down like I, I i realize when i do these videos i don't i don't want to give off the impression like i'm some sort of fashionista okay i am not i am the opposite of a fashionista but i feel like that's what gives me credibility because if i can look at an outfit and go whoa wait a minute i feel like that means something <laughs> if the person who knows nothing is concerned then that i feel like means something but i don't know <laughs> but uh, either way, I, I can't stand the dress she has over the top of that Valentina. The Valentina itself is a whole nother story of ugliness for a whole nother day. But that dress, <laughs> it just really adds to the whole thing, you know. And then the hat with it all. Why not? I mean, it's LuLaRoe. It's all about over-accessorizing. The more, the merrier. <laughs> when an MLM pusher has power over you and knows your weaknesses. A few years ago, I was working as a teacher's assistant. Basically, I would just help my lead teacher out by teaching some subjects, monitoring kids, grading homework, etc. She was basically my boss and would give me tasks to do every day. One day, she told me that she was not coming back as a teacher the following year because she wanted to work from home to stay with her kids. We'd gotten along great all year, so I was happy for her that she was doing something she obviously was excited about. If I only knew. This was the first experience I had with an MLM, so it didn't set off any red flags when she asked if she could talk to me about the business she was starting. I'd appreciated how nice she had been all year, so I agreed to listen to whatever pitch she was thinking of. The first thing that set off my suspicion was when she asked if she could call me at some point after school. I was confused, since I assumed she would just talk to me while I was there with her at school, but I decided to go with it anyway. She sent me an email with a video about life leadership. I had forgotten the name until I looked into the mega thread. She told me to watch the video, then call her afterwards. The video was a bunch of weird inspirational mumbo jumbo about getting out of debt through only buying things with cash or something like that. I didn't have any debt besides car payments, so I was kind of ambivalent to the whole thing. I called her and she asked me what I thought of the video. I was upfront and said I didn't really find the topic relevant to my situation. She then told me to hold on one sec as she wanted to get her sponsor or boss or something in on the call. This made me extremely uncomfortable because I am an incredibly shy person. Meeting someone new always gives me anxiety and it's worse over the phone. I didn't want to hang up though because I liked my lead teacher and I didn't want to offend her. The guy she brought in on the call was really greasy sounding. He kept asking me weird questions like, do you think you're perfect? No, I responded simply. Then he went into a spiel about how that means I can benefit from the books and CDs that they sell. Oh, <laughs> wow. He also kept mentioning Jesus a lot. I'm Catholic, and it made me even more uncomfortable to have him roping that name into a sales pitch. He kept trying to pin me down on buying stuff, but I kept refusing. My lead teacher kept jumping back in to say stuff every once in a while, and to know that she was there listening while this guy was trying to talk circles around me was weirdly humiliating. The call ended after about 15 minutes, but it seemed like forever. I looked up life leadership just after the call and started researching MLM companies. I decided I didn't want anything to do with life leadership. I thought it was over after that, but I was wrong. Over the next couple of weeks, my lead teacher kept awkwardly bringing up life leadership. She knew I struggled with self-confidence because of the fact that she watched me t teach all year, and she kept saying that the books they sold would help me to be a more confident person. I just kept on telling her that I wanted to work on myself, but I would rather not buy any of the books. This was incredibly difficult for me to do because at my work, my primary goal is to do whatever is asked of me. And here was my direct boss trying to pressure me into buying her books. I kept feeling guilty about refusing her and not listening to the sample CDs she gave to me. My family told me I should report her to the headmaster of the school, but thankfully she stopped pushing the stuff after a couple weeks, and I didn't hear about it after that. I was glad to finish out the year without dealing with it anymore, but I just couldn't look at my lead teacher the same after that. I was still grateful for all the help she had given me throughout the year and everything I had learned from her, but I couldn't help feeling a bit betrayed. She had been willing to try and rope me, a trusting person fresh out of college, into her business and exploit her knowledge of me and my weakness to sell products. I haven't seen her for a few years, and I hope she eventually got out of it. I am glad that I had this experience, however, because recently my little brother, who just graduated high school, said he had gotten a job with Vector Marketing. 
I didn't recognize the name, but as soon as he started telling me about how he had to make presentations at people's houses and how they had asked him to send messages to all of his contacts on his phone and Snapchat, I was instantly suspicious. I looked up Vector Marketing and told him what it was. He wasn't super willing to listen at first. He was getting drawn in by the promises of easy money and whatnot. We argued a few times over it, and even though it made him angry, I stood firm with what I was saying because of my previous experience. He did stay with the company for a few weeks, but now has quit and has a legitimate sales job. He only made 50 bucks for the long hours and training and the bunches of presentations he made because they only paid him for commission, not by appointment as they had promised. I'm glad he got out before they sucked up more of his time, well, and money. Anyway, I guess that's all to say MLM should go die in a hole. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a really unfortunate experience that you had, and especially someone who's in the education system, like, it makes me sad how desperate that woman must be to be able to stay at home and be with her children and got sucked up into this goofy uh, MLM. And it sounds like her upline is a real gem. Um, he's probably uh, one of those people that's really good at not caring about people's lives and knows how to pitch things in a way as to make the vulnerable listen. So I'm glad that even though you are a shy person, you knew that this was wrong and good for you. <laughs> and I, I am someone who can be the same type of way. I'm not, I mean, I am kind of a naturally shy person, but more than anything, I, I am a very non-confrontational person, uh, especially in like my work environment. If I have to go back there every day, like I don't want trouble. I don't want there to be animosity. I don't want people to think I hate them or vice versa. You know, it's really important to me to make sure that there's that like work, you know, mental health balance situation. So, um, I understand why that was really hard for you, but also uh, super proud of you for being able to stand your ground considering that you had to go back there every day and like see her and deal with it. So um, I hope you give yourself some credit for that. And yeah, definitely good thing you went through this experience because if you hadn't, there's a really good chance your brother would have really gotten messed up by that company. There's a really good chance. Uh, Vector is one of those that is probably best at recruiting young people fresh out of high school. It's kind of like their favorite market, their chosen demographic uh, for obvious reasons, right? You know, it's it's easy to convince young people that uh, you can make easy money. And it, and it just takes a few years into adulthood to know that that's just not true. <laughs> that's just never the case. Easy money goes fast, right? Easy money, if it's easy, isn't real money, right? There's a, I, I know there's a better saying for it, but like fast money goes fast, something like that. Um, but either way, I, I agree with your final sentiment. <laughs> I really do. And um, I'm really glad you got out of it. And I'm really glad that you got your brother out of it. Good for you. You might be a shy person, but your convictions are pretty impressive. Ooh la la, LuLaRoe has found its way into an antique shop. It's vintage now. <laughs> Well, you know, with some of the patterns, they might as well be. They look like something from another time. Like, look at the, not the one in the very front, the, the blue and black and white one. That one's awful. It really is. But the one that you can see behind that, the like green one with like orange flowers and then the weird yellow circles that kind of look like eyes. <laughs> Like that one. That is awful. That looks like something from another time, like a time gone by. It totally does. It's just awful. So if someone were like, yes, this is a retro piece and I didn't know it was LuLaRoe and I saw Antique Shop, I'd believe it. I wouldn't buy it, but I'd believe it. <laughs> First of all, where the heck did they get off calling this top the perfect tank? Like, how dare you? Perfect is a strong word. Okay, this isn't even an okay tank top. This is one of those gigantic circus tent cuts that we keep seeing. They call it a shape. There's no shape. The size on that wouldn't even matter. Like you could probably be like an XXL in, in a size and I bet a medium in this would fit you because I just don't think it matters. <laughs> it just doesn't appear to matter. I mean, it's just tent sized. It's just outrageous. They just obviously don't care. They're just slapping it together. They're barely shaping it at all. And then the fact that the stripes are kind of asymmetrical, right? Like how some are thicker and then they get skinnier and then it, that kind of illusion is like not something you really want across your midsection and like hip area at all. And I know nothing about clothing and I know that, right? I know that that is bad, bad. <laughs> and then also the Kermit the Frog leggings. What? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Uh, I'm so upset. 
that LuLaRoe has managed to get the rights to a lot of these, uh, you know, like Muppety things and other Disney characters and such. It just it makes me really sad that it's gone that direction. And I hope uh, I've heard rumors. I think some of you have said that Disney might no longer par partner with LuLaRoe, maybe because of the latest lawsuit with the whole state of Washington suing them. So that could be a thing. I don't know. But <laughs> come on, Kermit the Frog leggings do not go with mismatched striped circus tent tank top. All right, I don't know what planet you're coming from. <laughs> oh, I just can't stand it. And even if you are a Muppets fan, I mean, there's got to be a better way to show your appreciation for the Muppets. There's just, there's got to be a way that is less disrespectful than this. <laughs> It's time for everyone's favorite segment of the video. It's time for the wholesome moment of the day. Let's see who you guys sent over. First up, we have Atreyu, and this was sent over by Jillian. Thank you so much, Jillian. Now, Atreyu chose Jillian and her family when he was about five months old, which was six years ago. He's been their daughter's best friend and protector since she was five years old. Here's to many more years. <laughs> I definitely think that chair belongs to him now. <laughs> Next up, we have Millie, and this was sent over by Colleen. Thank you so much, Colleen. Now, Millie is from Brighton, Michigan, and she is a rescue who was being used as bait for dog fighting. Yuck. She thinks she is a tiny dog and always tries to sit on your lap. She is one of nine rescue dogs that Colleen and her family have. That's absolutely incredible. Thank you for your service. <laughs> um, I hate dog fighting. I'm sure you all feel the same. <laughs> I just, I can't imagine that this sweet dog was used for such a thing, but I am so glad to know that she is in a good place now. Last but not least, we have Tony, and this was sent over by Darianne. Thank you so much, Darianne, for sending this over, and I apologize if I said your name incorrectly. Feel free to correct me below. Anyways, uh, the day this email was sent to me was August 8th, and uh, that day was actually the day that Darianne became the cat mom to this lovely little boy. That was his actual adoption date, August 8th. How awesome is that? He was a stray, but now this five-year-old tabby has got it made. Thank you so much for adopting Darianne. That's wonderful. You guys are going to have so many good years together. And if you are looking to get a new member of your family, I definitely recommend to adopt and not shop. Check out your local shelters, your local humane societies. Donate if you can, volunteer if you can, and don't forget to spay new to your pets. And if you would like to see a photo of your pets here, then go ahead and send it to my email, which is in my channel description box, and you will see your pets here eventually. All right, Fox Trotters, that's going to do it for me today. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you liked that video, please hit that like button down below. If you have any good comments or suggestions, please leave that down below as well. I love to hear what you have to say, and I love interacting with you all. If you have not already, hit that subscribe button and become a Fox Trotter. Come join the den. Den Mother would love to have you. And I'm going to leave my Patreon here somewhere. Feel free to check it out. And if you don't, no big deal. I'm just glad you came to spend some time with me. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed that video. I definitely did. I love making these. I know I say that every time, but I just want you all to know how much I really enjoy this. <laughs> I know I work a job. I start school soon. I have a life I'm attempting to maintain. You know, like I have a lot going on, but like I genuinely enjoy doing this. <laughs> and it seems like you guys do too. And I'm so excited to see where this goes. And I can't wait. You guys rock. I wouldn't be here without you. Well, I mean, I would be, but like no one would be listening. You know what I mean? Like it'd be a lot more sad. So you guys rock. I really appreciate you all so incredibly much. And as always, folks, until the next video, take care.